Yes, absolutely. I represent the British <coughs> Broadcasting Corporation, which is something, again, I take incredibly seriously. I'll have to come on to that in, in just a moment. But yes, that's very important. Any others? Yes, it's a team effort, absolutely. Yeah, I have a producer uh, and a BA, a broadcast assistant, who work with me every single day. Uh, we have a team of reporters who work in the newsroom and they'll often contribute to the programme. And I have uh, the intrepid Judy Mayer, who heads out and about into the, uh, into the area every day in the radio car and uncovers stories. I don't know if that's something that you enjoy listening to when she's out there and meeting people and, and introducing you to stories that you might never have known were going on right on your doorstep. So that all forms part of it, absolutely right. I think we've got pretty much all of them there, really. Presenter, journalist, entertainer, storyteller, although it's rarely my stories. It is important that I tell my own stories every now and then, just to ingratiate the audience a little bit, but at the same time, it's always your stories that, that are most important to me. Um, there is one other one, I suppose, which, which I shouldn't leave off the list, and, and it's one nobody ever really appreciates, and that is, that is my job, is to make sure you don't switch off the radio. <laughs> Which is an odd thing to consider, really, but if I do something that, that I knowingly will make people switch off, then I'm failing. Um, my job is to build an audience, maintain an audience as well, so that's getting a little, te a little bit technical, so I'll move on quickly. Um, I'll talk about the phone index, because that, that I think is probably the most crucial element to my programme. At 9 o'clock every morning, after Jonathan Lampon finishes on The Breakfast Show, which is a very journalistic show, it's all speech from 7 till 9, covering the day's news, with a big emphasis on the local, big local stories. At nine o'clock, I pick up with, again, an all speech hour. We don't play any music in the first hour of the programme. I set up the daily topic, and I take your calls. Um, it's important that we pick the right story. Every day, my producer, Pete, and I battle over this. And he was going to be here tonight, but he's also born, unfortunately, so he couldn't be here. He sends his apologies. But we have a daily battle <laughs> about what we speak about. The first priority every single morning is, is there a good local story that's strong enough, engaging enough, and entertaining enough to sustain a full 60 minutes of, of speech radio? And if there is, we will always prioritise it. Invariably, as diverse and interesting as Leicestershire is, we don't always have that, uh, that pleasure. So sometimes we have to revert to the national news agenda to pick our daily topic. Uh, today, for example, was, uh, was a prime example of that. If we can then find a local twist on that, so much the better. So today's big talking point was the social care reform white paper that the government were announcing this lunchtime, what was going to be contained in it, how people were going to feel hearing that news, how it was going to affect your lives. So it's my job to take a very complex story like that and explain it, not, not dumb it down, but explain it in a way that a mass audience can understand. If I can give it a local flavour, I will, and I did that today by asking our MP for Leicester West, Liz Kendall, onto the programme to get her perspective on this. And of course she plays a very important role for those who don't know in the Shadow Cabinet as the Shadow Minister for Older People Care and Older People. And she was on the front bench in opposition today as that uh, white paper was being announced. But then, <laughs> then it's my job to come up with a question that I can ask the audience generally that will sound perhaps a little bit dangerous, a little bit edgy, a bit exciting, something that's going to keep you entertained. So part of the white paper that was announced today was that people are going to take, be, be able to take out a loan to defer payments for their social care until after they die. Well, sounds like a perfectly decent idea and a good way to fund the social care funding gap. But what it would mean is that you would die with tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt. Now, very good point. Well, absolutely right. A question I asked on the air this morning to, uh, I forget who now, but... Uh, Yes, an unanswered question at this point. But um, I decided that the best way to approach that topic was to explain it in that way and allow people to have their say, but also to tap into that emotional element that many, many, many of us feel that we don't want to leave with all of our loose ends untied. We don't want to leave with debt to have over to our family. Most of us would probably want to be able to, to shuffle off this mortal coil having all of our loose ends tied up and perhaps leave a little bit of inheritance behind. Now, as it turns out, I, I was right to a point because a great many people did feel that way and we had some very passionate phone calls and a lot of people uh, who felt very strongly uh, that they did not want to, to leave this planet owing tens of thousands of pounds. So the question I was asking this morning is, are you happy to die in debt? Which sounds quite spiky, but that's the point because I need to grab your attention. 
you're probably very busy at nine o'clock in the morning, and if I'm going to grab your attention and maintain it, I have to, I have to treat a story in a certain way to make sure that I try and keep busy. Yes. Do you feel that there's a kind of ephemerality? Inevitably, we'll end up covering topics in a, uh, or similar topics, but I'll always try and do it in a different way. That's not always possible, and there are some topics that are perfectly big enough to sustain the same conversation three or six months later that we had before. Um, I try not to let my personal passions dictate the news agenda. That's very important, obviously, in the BBC. But inevitably, if there's a topic that I'm particularly passionate about, it will be a better listen for my listeners if I can deliver a more impassioned discussion about it. If it's something I have absolutely no connection or interest with, I will always try and do my research if it's the right topic to talk about, but it's really hard to, to do that with only an hour's notice some days. Um, thank you. We'll come to some more questions in a bit.